place because today I will be going to Nishiki Market, which is the kitchen place of Kyoto. I will be exploring it with Ninja Food Tours. So, very excited to get some insight into the culture, into the food, into the marketplace. Come along. When you see like these flags on the, the restaurants, it means that they are open for business. When they aren't there, that means they're closed. Okay, I'm here with Yuma of Ninja Food Tours. Hello. How long have you had this company, Ninja Food Tours? It's been uh, three years, so this, this is our third year. Third year? And what, what inspired you to do um, food tours and why ninja? <laughs> that caught me, the ninja, ninja part. Ninja is a very catchy word too, but ninja means also an export. So through our food tours, I just, you know, we are hoping to, um, you know, well, you to be a food expert in Japan. Okay, um, I want to be a food expert. <laughs> <laughs> and then I used to corporate finance job in the States too, but I, I just got bored uh, being glued to my PC all day long and um, I just, I thought, why not come, come back to Japan and do something different. Okay. So right now we are at Isin Yoshoku and it is the first restaurant to sell okonomiyaki in Kyoto. The way this is different from other types of okonomiyaki, like say in Osaka, Osaka will mix the okonomiyaki together, all the ingredients. But Kyoto, they'll create it like a pancake or like a crepe and wrap it. Nori and inside some scallions, onions, some egg, shrimp, and ginger. Konyaku in here, which is like a diet food, no calories. I love it. That means I can eat a lot. A whole medley going on in my mouth. So many different ingredients. A lot of things are just exploding all at the same time. Osaka's Okonomiyaki is kind of like already found at Unison. Meld it together and creates one experience. This one creates an experience where your mouth is working in many different ways. Many different flavors are going off individually. So this one I like, like multi-flavor pop rocks. There's some Okonomiyaki restaurants where you'll get a bowl of ingredients and you'll have to cook it and prepare it for yourself. Over 170 shots. <laughs> Kyoto cuisine. There's a lot of cooking with the dashi broth. It smells like a little bit of the bonito in here, the dashi. The tamago, very soft, kind of fluffy and light. The dashi kind of folds it in. Gives it a little bit more of a hearty flavor. Um, not eggy, but in fact, it takes away the egginess of it. This is called hamo eel. I'm not a huge fan of eel, but this tastes amazing. The tempura batter around it is like mm, so crispy, and you can taste like the oil in it. The eel itself is kind of fluffy. It's very fluffy, but I love the salt. I'm tasting the salt granules. Mm -hmm. oh. Good. Mm. I want more. This hamel is definitely a must try in Kyoto. It is. <laughs> it'll rock your mouth. And that's takoyaki. During peak hour, it's hard to not feel a little overwhelmed by the crowds, but this market has got an interesting variety of foods that has the flavor of Kyoto. You've kind of got a diversity going on here with a lot of things, as well as souvenirs, cool souvenirs. Snoopy's not very Japanese, but no harm in checking this place out. Snoopy 
Dango. Uji is kind of like a home of matcha green tea. Peanuts and bean jam. I don't know. Matcha. A Charlie Brown inspired dessert. Even though there's a level of pedestrian quality to the food here, it's a sort of mixture between street food but household cuisine. So you'll find there's like a strong sense of pride going into the foods here. You won't find too many foods that are like hyped or Instagrammable because the foods here, they actually taste really good. This is with Kyoto meat. So you have quail, sparrow, Duck. That's eel guts. Yeah, I like it. And eel. Okay, so this one you can pick like the squid and she will grill it for you right there. Oh, this is the Kyoto Okonomiyaki. So they fold it over like a crepe or like a taco. Wow. That's cute. In this market, you'll find a lot of signs that say no eating and walking. You're supposed to eat in front of or off to the side of the vendor that you bought the food from. It's also supposed to help dissuade like dumping your trash anywhere else. One thing Kyoto is really known for or famous for is their way of preserving foods. So in this case, some things are dried, other things are pickled, and that's things that you can suddenly try or experience in Kyoto foods. These pickled vegetables here are pickled to the thing that they ferment the sake with. So you'll find after they squeeze the rice and ferment it for the sake, they will use it for the pickled vegetables. This kind of looks like a radish. <laughs> mm. Daikon. This is pickled bamboo. This is supposed to be a specialty of Kyoto. I have pickled with soy sauce. Very nice. And the bamboo shoot is very soft. Mm. I like that. It always has kind of like a little, a bit of a salty, plum like flavor to it. Let's try the pickled eggplant. I didn't know you could pickle them. I have some wasabi with sesame over here. Nice. It's interesting how this market or Japanese food here has all these small foods that you would never think are anything other than vegetables. <laughs> This is the actual wasabi root that they use to make wasabi. <laughs> so this is the actual bonito that they shave down to have these bonito flakes. Well, actually our strawberry season is in the winter. Yeah, because we do eat strawberry shortcake on Christmas Day yeah. and a lot of Japanese farmers use greenhouses to farm strawberries. Mm. I feel like it's light. I mean, you yeah. said it's watered down. But yeah. It's yeah. still sweet though. It's still very sweet. Yeah, yeah. Fish cake is another thing you might want to try when you're in Kyoto. Because there's no food or rivers around here in Kyoto and there is a strong sensibility about fresh foods in Japan you'll find that the seafood that they do have they found a way to keep the flavor fresh or alive butter and potato fish cake mm, it's basically fish cake with soft potato in it with a buttery taste I don't even know how to relate to anything I've tried because I haven't tried anything like this before what's in there? So red ginger and then cod fish. Mm. Definitely the ginger is kind of like absorbing some of the fish cake taste. It's kind of got a very gingery zesty feel to it. Kind of like, I feel like it's like cleaning my palate somehow from the fish cake. One must try thing is the tofu here in Kyoto and that's because the water quality of Kyoto happens to be really good and so like the tofu is farmed um, in this water creating 
a good quality. Now this shop has a lot of tofu products. They have soy milk donuts. You can smell them from here. Uh, smells like good old fashioned funnel cake. Mm, slightly sugared. This reminds me of funnel cake. Slight milky flavor. I feel like it would be good for dipping. Okay. Oh. Very creamy. It's dipped in soy sauce, but it's also got a very sesame flavor. It's not like the ones that I've tried like back home in the States. Thank you. Oh, look at this character. For 350 yen, I got the brown sugar soybean flour. This soft syrup is made of soy milk. Actually, there are a lot of things on this menu I want to get. I already tried the donuts. I was going to go back for more just to take it on the road, but this sidetracked me. There's no eating and walking, so obviously I have limited choices how to do this with, with my camera. Because I only have one hand to hold this and one hand to hold the camera, um, I guess I'm going to have to do the lid. Okay, kinako. I inhaled a bunch of kinako, uh, which is soybean powder, I totally forgot. It's a different flavor. It's not milk. It's kind of got that earthy flavor of kinako. Um, it's not super sugary like ice cream. It's lightly sugared. You can taste a little bit of the brown sugar. So I found a seat. This is nice. Okay. Similar to how the tofu that I, the sample tofu that I tried was like milky and creamy. It's kind of got like that same idea. It's a good choice. And I've got a cute little character right there. Right here I have black bean tea. This is one of the teas that Kyoto is known for, as well as matcha green tea. Next up, I'm going to an all matcha shop to try some matcha ice cream. Oh, she's cutting the matcha mochi. So this is a shop with all matcha products. From desserts, to teas, to little snacks. Wow, this looks so funky. <laughs> Feels very light. Very milky with a little bit of bitterness to it. Peekaboo, you can see a little cone in the back. Look at this consistency right there. It's thick. Now the concentrated form of matcha is actually really strong and bitter, like bitter. So a lot of these products are mixed with matcha to kind of like soften the flavor a little. Thanks for watching! Check out my Japan video playlist for more in-depth videos about these places and check back for more girl traveler videos where I take you inside my solo travel adventures. Comment below to let me know what do you think of this video. Till then, travel safe, smart, and fun. I will see you in Kyoto. May the girl be with you.